If you define freedom as a property of groups, if you use positive freedom, then you're using a conception of freedom that's dangerous and misleading. So if you're using copy left, the way you think about freedom is dangerous and misleading. So here's the too long didn't listen uh, version of the talk. Copy left reduces freedom unless you misdefine freedom. And positive freedom, this misdefinition of freedom, is harmful to real freedom, to negative freedom. So copy left really does reduce freedom. Now, I have, so essentially, this is what it boils down to uh, through all the talking and the quotes and that, so on. But in FLOSS groups, not everyone chooses uh, permissive licenses. Not all software is licensed under the BSD. So does that mean that everyone who uses, an, who uses a copyleft license is some sort of authoritarian dictator? Well, no, it doesn't. Um, as it turns out, as far as real-world FLOSS projects are concerned, nothing I just said matters. So why does... So, sorry, guys, you can, can all leave now. It's, uh, it doesn't... It doesn't <laughs> there's no point in what I just said. Why, why is this? Well, because I've been talking philosophy and I've been trying to talk about the real world at the same time and the two don't mix. No. Uh, the real reason is that software freedom isn't just about freedom. Software freedom is actually about other things, like equality and fairness and goodness to a certain extent. And so software freedom isn't just about freedom. And talking about FLOSS projects as if they just care about freedom is confusing matters. They have freedom in the name, but that's not all that matters to them. If you think they just care about freedom, then you think they're all authoritarian dictators. But Really, there are a lot of other values that we care about as well. Freedom might be first for some of us, for all of us, I don't know. Freedom might be the first thing you care about, but you also care about giving something back, about everyone being equal on the same level, about actually producing usable software, maybe, sometimes. Um, so we have to be clear, again, what we actually care about so we can actually have a discussion. Freedom means a very specific thing. And if we include equality and goodness and happiness and pink unicorns and whatever, if we include all that in freedom, then we get misled and we think that certain things are freedom that aren't actually freedom, and then we disagree. So we have to be clear about what it is that is freedom and what isn't freedom. And regardless of whether something's good, if we think something's good, that doesn't mean it benefits freedom. It can be good without benefiting freedom. Yeah, so I think this conclusion and the argument that's led to it can qualify as reaching the truth by unconventional means. I mean, it, it was a little bit circuitous. And we've discovered using the tools of political philosophy something that's not obvious at first glance about something that actually matters. Um, and we've talked about politics and philosophy and power and constitutions and freedom and Rawls's first principle and McCallum's tripartite definition, and we found out that everything isn't as it seems. So, despite what some people might think, politics isn't just intruding into the internet. Politics has always been there. And you can't escape politics, whether you're deciding how to license your code or how to organize your community or how to do anything else that involves other people. But if you think about these political concepts in the right way, and maybe if you draw inspiration from the work of previous philosophers, you'll be able to make a decision that's at least thoughtful and that you can communicate to other people. The answers to these sort of questions aren't always easy, but I hope you'll find that the questions are at least interesting. Thank you.
Thank you. So we're going to uh, take questions now. So uh, if you only have... easy questions, no difficult questions, please. <laughs> so if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll come to you with the mic. No flame wars either. Yes, hello. Uh, there's a question from IRC. Oh dear. Um, and the question is, did you ever look into other software licenses, as example, Microsoft Windows license? Sorry, um, I, can't, I can't actually understand what you're saying. Did you ever look into other software licenses, as an example, for example, Microsoft Windows license? Did I ever look into other software licenses, as an example, for example, the Microsoft Windows license? No, I, I did talk about totalitarian dictatorships, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what that's about. Um, no, and I suppose, you know, I, there were two ways I could take this talk. I could either say, yeah, I'm going to talk about the whole of philosophy, and I introduce and analyze and discuss a concept in 15 seconds, and that way I can cover the whole thing, or I could focus really down and try to lead you through one specific argument. Um, there's certainly something to be said about the specific uh, restrictions that are imposed in, in, in other licenses. And I have thought about it, but there wasn't really space for it in this talk. But uh, is my email address on here? If, if, if you have an idea, okay, my email address is on my website anyway. So if you have an idea about that, I think it's on Pentabuff as well. So if you, if you have an idea about uh, what happens to freedom in Windows, <laughs> what happens to freedom in Windows, then, then do feel free to, to get in touch. Thank you. Uh, hello, just a little remark. Uh, while we're you were presenting the, the positive and the negative freedoms. I was thinking that, in fact, the GPL could be seen as a negative freedom, like you could compare them to the negative freedoms of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the right of each individual not to be. And I was thinking about the right of each user not to be dispossessed by anyone else of the right to use and to give yeah. As, the, as, as you received the same product. Okay, so, so you, could, you could think about the GPL. Um, under, so obviously this is simplified because we could argue about this forever. Um, but you, so you could talk about the GPL through the lens of negative freedom. And here's the problem. This is a problem from another domain of, of philosophy. This is a problem from ethics. So some people, utilitarians, they think that in order to be a good person, you always have to maximize happiness. Everything you do, maximize happiness, maximize happiness, maximize happiness. Any action you take, that's what makes it the right thing to do. So you might want to say the GPL does the same thing, except instead of maximizing happiness, whatever you do, maximize freedom, maximize freedom, maximize freedom. Here's the problem. Um, the world is really big, and it's very hard to tell what the consequences of your action are going to be tomorrow or five years down the line or ten years down the line. So it's very hard to tell uh, how to maximize happiness or how to maximize freedom. If, if, it, it certainly um, looks like a good principle, but it's very hard to actually guide your actions with it. You don't think so? You think it's easy to... Okay, go on. No, I, I was thinking more about the fact that it, as a negative freedom, the freedom to prevent every other user, including the still unborn ones, of the risk of being dispossessed of the freedom to, to access the same okay. knowledge. In, yeah, including, that, the, so, including um, so thinking about the future, including, um, including the users who aren't yet born in your calculation of how free it is. So you've got the, the freedom, you know, however you measure freedom, you've got your level of freedom, and then you look at all, everyone who's ever going to use the software throughout history, and you try to assess what you do to maximize that level of freedom. Okay, um, well, what you could do is you could put in your software license a clause that says everybody who uses the software license must have six children. That way you've got a huge number of, and they must all use the software. That way you've got a huge number of future users of the software, and regardless of how much freedom they have, if you make sure there are enough people, there's a lot of freedom. So you can't, so uh, that's what, that would be one way of maximizing freedom. I know, I know what you're saying. I know, I know why you're saying it, but I don't know if you could actually, I don't know if you could actually think that way in practice to guide your actions. 
we'll go on, go on again. Yes. Okay. Um, this is possibly uh, an attempt to break your prohibition on difficult questions and indeed on flame wars, <laughs> but I'll try it anyway. Um, I'd like to accuse you of a certain intellectual dishonesty in relying on an opponent of positive freedom for your definition of it. That is to say, I don't think it's appropriate to use Berlin to define positive freedom. But then to your thesis that you've used political philosophy to say something that matters, I'd like to suggest that you've actually done the opposite. You've reduced the concept of freedom by virtue of the fact that you've said that um, freedom is not necessarily desirable and not the only thing that's desirable, that you've reduced freedom to something that no longer matters at all. So, two questions for you then. How would you define positive freedom? And do you think that freedom is the only thing that matters? Uh, to the second question, that depends on the definition of freedom that one wants. Okay, would but accept. if you define freedom in the way that you want, would it be the only thing that matters? In the way that who wants? That you want. Um, why do I wish to? Um, personally, I'd say that freedom isn't something that should be analysed in terms of what exists in the real world, um, and that it's a mistake that's often made by philosophers to assume that we can talk about freedom as a tangible, or not necessarily tangible, but as a property of the empirical world rather than a property of conceptual thought, something that limits but also enables the way in which we can think. So, um, to to name the philosophers there that are developing that thought. It's an Adornian conception of freedom as an emphatic concept or, in a sense, a Kantian regulative idea rather than a concept that actually applies to the world. So what is your definition of freedom? Then? That, what is that definition of freedom? That definition would be freedom as an aspiration to a a fulfilled and complete life for everybody. Freedom as a fulfilled and complete life to everybody. No, as an aspiration to oh, as an aspiration. fulfilled and complete life for everybody. Okay, so freedom is a thing that, that, that doesn't actually exist in the real world and can't, but it's something you want to work towards. Absolutely. Is that right? Okay, so... That's, that's certainly a valid way of looking at freedom. The, the, the way I was, I, was, I was approaching this is coming at political philosophy via ethics. And under, under at least my preferred version of my preferred you know, selected ethical theories, the ethical theory you choose has to be action guiding. So anything that, anything that you want to become true has to be specific enough that you can actually work towards it. Now, I, I'm not sure if, do, do you think that freedom as a Kantian ideal is actually something that you can, as an individual, work towards? Yes, yeah, sorry. Oh, no mic, right. No, so it's, so it's not something, so as an individual, you can't actually work towards it. Sorry, I don't endorse the Kantian ideal, I endorse the Adornian concept that could be seen as a sort of Kantian ideal. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Right, but is, nevertheless, is it something that as an individual you can work towards? Sorry. Come on the stage, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it's a conversation we should have a coffee afterwards. Yes. Um, uh, as an individual, yes, but not only. Okay, so as an individual, okay, so we're... So here's the uh, sort of meta, meta, meta question that we're considering here. We're trying to get very different things out of political philosophy. Um, I'm trying to consider it as a practical exercise, as something that actually tells you how to structure the world. Now, if you disagree with that as a very project, then we're not going to agree on the conclusions we come to about the terms we're talking about. No, my point is you didn't because you redefine freedom towards the end of something that's neither necessarily desirable or the only thing that's desirable, which means it no longer tells us anything about how to structure the world. I didn't say it wasn't necessarily desirable. I think freedom is, is desirable, but I don't think it's the only thing that's desirable. Sorry, then, I misunderstood. Okay. <laughs> we only have a uh, couple more minutes left. Yes, one more question from RSC. Um, a negative freedom like BSD, wouldn't you say it is restrictive to others to say that others cannot 